What's up, everybody? In today's video, I will be giving you my updated two round mock draft. If you're new to the channel, I do new mock drafts every single Monday, new picks, new trades, and new weekly content. If you already subscribed, welcome back. You know what it is. So without further ado, let's get into the draft. So with the first pick, there is no need for explanation. We already know who they're going to pick. Caleb Williams. If you've been watching my recent mock drafts, you will see that with pick two, I would justify why Jaden Daniels is a good pick for the commanders and why Drake May is a good fit for the commanders. But in this mock draft, with Sam Howell being traded, I do believe that they will be drafting his college backup quarterback with Cliff Kingsbury air raid kind of offense. Drake May lives and dies by the gun. He loves to sling the ball a lot. Very Josh unlike. So I believe Drake May will be the pick to the commanders. I just believe that he fits that scheme with the air raid and just slinging the ball around. So I believe pick two, we're going Drake May. Pick three, the New England Patriots. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been looking at different mock drafts and just see that one, two, and three have been quarterbacks. Um, but I think with the Patriots here, I don't think that they should force themselves to pick a quarterback without doing some due diligence on Jaden Daniels to see if he is a franchise quarterback. I don't want to spend too much time on this pick, but this is what I've gathered based on my research. Jaden Daniels' best season at Arizona State University was when Brandon Ayuk was his wide receiver. When he got drafted, Two years after that, his best playmaker was Rashad Wright, the running back. Then he transferred to LSU, where Malik Neighbors was there, Brian Thomas Jr. was there. And then after having a full year in that system and having a full year with that rapport with the receivers, this past season he had his best season and won the Heisman Trophy Award. Since 2020, quarterbacks that have won the Heisman and went to the NFL – about 30% of them have ended up being a franchise quarterback, which means 70% have not succeeded that well in the NFL. I think that the Patriots need to ask themselves, is Jaden Daniels a franchise quarterback for our franchise, or is he a quarterback that's been surrounded with great talent throughout his college? Not throughout, but like, is Jaden Daniels a quarterback that was just surrounded by great talent, which made him the quarterback that he is? The Patriots have a lot of holes on their team. And I just feel like based on the infrastructure, lack of playmakers, the line was like bottom 10 in the NFL. I think Gerard Mayo and Elliott Wolf need to tell themselves, is this the best scenario for Jaden Willie for Jaden Daniels, or is it Marvin Harrison Jr.? I do believe that the Patriots are probably going to come to conclusion that Jaden Daniels is probably not the franchise quarterback that they think they see in him. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. probably has the best floor and the best ceiling at this pick between him and Jaden Daniels. Patriots need playmakers. So in this mock draft, we are going to go with the Patriots going with Marvin Harrison Jr., Pick four, the Arizona Cardinals. This is where the Vikings and their two first-round picks are going to come into play for a trade offer. As you see right here, pick four, Arizona Cardinals. Malik Neighbors is right there on their lap. They definitely need wide receiver help. The Vikings are definitely going to call the Arizona Cardinals for a trade. And if I am the Cardinals... If I am going to go from pick four all the way up to pick 11 and miss out on Malik Neighbors, Justin Jefferson better be a part of that package. If I'm going to move up seven spots and miss up on Malik Neighbors, Justin Jefferson should be a part of the 11 to 23. When the Cardinals ask for that, the Vikings are like, Nope, we are not giving you Justin Jefferson. And I think this is where the Arizona Cardinals hang up the phone and they pick up Malik Neighbors and don't move. Pick five, 
the Los Angeles Chargers. They traded Keenan Allen to the Chicago Bears. They released Mike Williams. Austin Eckler is with the Commanders. So there's a lot of holes that need to be filled on this team. But I do believe that Jim Harbaugh is intrigued about a trade offer with the Minnesota Vikings for the 11 and 23rd pick. They know that the Vikings need a quarterback, and I bet you they probably know that the Vikings really want to get to pick five and get Jaden Daniels before the Giants could get him and not move and have him fall in their lap. With the desperation of the Minnesota Vikings wanting to go up and get a quarterback, I do believe this is where the Chargers bite. I understand that Roma Dunze is a great consolation prize, but I do believe that the Chargers are intrigued with the 11 and 23 pick and kind of rebuild the team that Jim Harbaugh wants to build a team. So we're going to go with the first trade in this draft. So we're going to go Los Angeles Chargers, Minnesota Vikings, 11, 23, pick five. I'm not too worried about draft capital and mock drafts. I just want to let the simulator just pick up the trade. So we'll just do this. Let the trade go through. Pick five, the Minnesota Vikings. Based on what I was saying at pick three with Jaden Daniels, I believe that for Jaden Daniels to succeed in the NFL, he needs the proper infrastructure around him. Great playmakers around him. They have a line. I think this is the best fit for Jaden Daniels to succeed. He could sit behind Sam Darnold or probably take the spot halfway through the season. But with Jaden Daniels coming in with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, Aaron Jones, I think this is the best scenario for Jaden Daniels to succeed in the NFL. So pick five, they go to Jaden Daniels. Pick six, the New York Giants. They have a decision to make here. Um, the Giants are giving Daniel Jones one more season, and then uh, Locke is there for a one-year deal. So we don't know how this season will play out for the Giants. They can just pick up J.J. McCarthy, or they can add an additional playmaker to the receiving core, have Roma Dunze, Jalen Hyatt, Rondell Robinson, Darius Slayton. But I don't think the Giants are going to fall into the smokescreen of J.J. McCarthy. I'm sure Dable would want a quarterback to sit for a year, have him develop just like the way he developed Josh Allen in Buffalo. But between Roma Dunze and J.J. McCarthy, I think the smart move for the Giants is to pick Roma Dunze at a top three wide receiver in the draft, amazing playmaker. Um, Roma Dunze could have a caliber playmaking career with the Giants similar to Odell Beckham before he got sent away. But I think Roma Dunze is the best pick here. And I don't think the Giants should overdraft for J.J. McCarthy at a playmaker. I think that will give Daniel, Daniel, um, Daniel Jones some good playmakers and the Giants could definitely figure out the quarterback situation from there. Pick seven, the Tennessee Titans. They have some poor tackle play. So I don't need much explanation it should go with Joe Alt right here. The Atlanta Falcons, they don't need a quarterback. They have Kirk Cousins, signed a four-year contract. I do believe Kirk is probably there for maybe two to three years. I don't think he will last the whole contract. He's, what, 36, 37, coming off an Achilles injury. I'm sure that it may be smart on their end to draft a quarterback and have him sit a couple years. So by the time Kirk retires and the quarterback has learned the system in the NFL, Drake London, Kyle Pitts. He's in a great team, but I don't think they go with J.J. McCarthy here. I think they tackle a need. They go with the best edge in the draft, Dallas Turner. Pick nine, the Chicago Bears. Had Roma Dunze fell here. I would have had the Bears pick Roma Dunze, but he got picked up by the New York Giants. So they can go edge with Jared Verse. I think that Jared Verse on one end, Montez Sweat on the other end, I think they will create havoc for tackles in that division, especially when you have Jordan Love, Jared Goff, and then Sam Darnold, 
Jaden Daniels. I'm sure they're going to have to, you know, get after the quarterback. I believe they were like ranked 30th or 31st in sacks last season. So they definitely need to apply some pressure to the quarterbacks. But the Chicago Bears have a lack of draft capital this draft. And with the Broncos and the Raiders in need of a quarterback, I believe at this point with J.J. McCarthy falling down a bit, I think as they come down to those two, just battling it out to kind of leap one another to get J.J. McCarthy. But I don't think the Broncos are okay with their quarterback situation. The Raiders have Garden Minshew, AOC, so they're okay for now. They're not in desperate need as the Broncos. The Broncos cannot go into next season with Jared Stidham. So I'm going to go trade here with Broncos and the Chicago Bears. So we're going to go Chicago Bears so they can just add some a little bit of draft capital. Not much, but just for the Broncos to leap a couple spots before the Raiders can make a move. So they do 12. Perfect. So the Broncos are going to give up pick 12. And their third round 76 to the Chicago Bears is nine. Go trade. And I think this is where the fall of J.J. McCarthy ends. Me personally, I don't think J.J. McCarthy is a top five. I honestly think this is lying season, smokescreen, Jim Arbaugh just talking out his you-know-what to kind of make J.J. McCarthy rise up the boards. But... I think the fall ends right before pick 10 and JJ McCarthy will get picked and become a start of the, of the Denver Broncos pick nine. Then pick 10, the New York jets. They can go Brock Bowers. If you've watched my recent mock drafts and Brock Bowers is here, I do have the jets getting Brock Bowers. Um, their offensive coordinator is Nathaniel Hackett. The thing about the Jets is that offensive line was so poor. Yes, they went through injuries, but if they do not invent, invest in the offensive line and someone gets hurt, I do not believe that Aaron Rodgers will last a full season if he keeps getting hit behind there and they do not protect him and invest in the line. So even though Brock Bowers is a nice receiving option, I think the smart way for Joe Douglas to protect Aaron Rodgers and build that line is to get a tackle right here. So it's going to come down to Talese Fawaga, Olu, J.C. Latham, and Troy Fatanu. Talese Fawaga, he's more on the right side, right guard, right tackle. Aaron Rodgers is a righty. I'm sure he wants his blind side to be protected. So I don't think they go Fawaga here. Then they have Olu. Pure left tackle, but I feel like if they draft Olu, he's gonna he's gonna sit on the bench behind Tyron Smith. I don't know if the Jets will be okay drafting a tackle this high for him to sit on the bench since there's no versatility in his game. And then you have you know J.C. Latham. I'm sure he would want to play on both sides of left right tackle but at Alabama he's primarily on the right side so similar to Talese Fawaka right side I think the Jets may reach a bit for a tackle here and I believe they will go with Troy Fatunu here's why he could play left tackle he could play left guard I'm sure he could play right guard right tackle there's versatility in his game if Tyron Smith goes down he's a plug and play left tackle he could be a plug and play starting left guard. The hell, if the center gets hurt, I'm sure he could probably step in and play center. If AVT gets hurt, I'm sure he could play right guard. And I feel like if the right tackle goes down, I'm sure he could play right tackle. I think Joe Douglas would be smart gang, a versatile lineman to play all five positions if someone gets hurt or just be a plug and play at any of those five spots. They go Troy Fatunu just based off his versatility. Pick 11, the Los Angeles Chargers. Now they have two first-round picks. I do believe, since they have Rashawn Slater on the left side, I do believe that it is important to invest on the right side. The main reason that Jim Harbaugh went to the Chargers is because of Justin Herbert. If you want to protect Justin Herbert and have him be the franchise quarterback, you got to invest in the line and protect him. So I think at pick 11, they go to Lise Fawaga to take care of the right side of the line. 
pick 12, the Chicago Bears. Now, here are a few options that they can go. They can go left tackle. They can go, go, uh, they can go edge. They can go wide right receiver at Brian Thomas. But since they were able to move back a couple spots, get an additional capital, and still be able to get Jared Verse here, I believe this is the pick right here. Jared Verse, the opposite of Montez Sweat. I think that's a great pick for the Chicago Bears. Pick 13, the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, they do need some help on the lines, I think particularly on the right side. So they have Olu, Jason Latham. I think Jason Latham would be a great pick. But with the Kansas City Chiefs acquiring Hollywood Brown, now you have Rashi Rice, Hollywood Brown, to stop the Kansas City Chiefs and for you to be, you know, have a great defense in your division, you have to stop the pass, especially if, you know, you have Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, you need to stop the pass with Amik Robertson not being with the Raiders. I think the Raiders need to get a lockdown corner with this pick 13. I think here they go with Kenyon Mitchell. He's been rising up the boards, and I think he fits that style of defense for um, Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce is the defensive-minded coach, former linebacker. He goes defense here, gets a corner to stop and prevent Mahomes just throwing touchdowns on their defense. Pick 14, the New Orleans Saints. This right here is a left tackle pick. Olu, Olu's, you know, fell down a bit, but I think this is the pick right here. Penning hasn't really worked out on the left-hand side, and I think it's very vital to protect the blind side of the quarterback. In New Orleans, scenes that gave him some time to pass the ball to Chris Olave. Olu, pick 14. Pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts. So here are a few options that the, that the Colts can go, right? They can go corner, get Terry and Arnold. They can go edge, get Latu, add some pass rush. They can go receiver, Brian Thompson Jr. But I think the pick here is Brock Bowers, Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, Josh Downs. I think by the Colts adding Brock Bowers, Shane Steichen can kind of scheme him up, whether it's having him lined up on the line of scrimmage, big slot, out wide. I think they can get very creative with Brock Bowers on the Colts. And I think that would not only enhance Anthony Richardson's ability on this team, but I think this will make this offense so dynamic in that division, especially being in a division with the, 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 uh, the Houston Texans. Colts pick Bowers at pick 15. Pick 16, the Seattle Seahawks. They have Vlatu here. They can go edge. They can go tackle. They can go guard, honestly, if they get JPJ. Um, this is quite interesting. I want to see where they would want to go. I say they go edge. I think they get Latu. Latu is probably one of the best pass rushers in this draft. Yes, he's had some medical concerns, but there's no denying about his pass rushing ability. And I feel like him just being a rotational piece in that defense and applying pressure to the quarterback. I think Latu would be a great fit on the edge on the Seahawks. And the Seahawks have a defensive minded coach. I believe their first pick in the draft is defense Latu. Pick 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They can go edge. I'm sure Chop would want to, you know, be in the system and, and, you know, be mentored by Josh Allen. They can go corner, Terry and Arnold. I'm sure um, that Jaguars pass defense could use some help. Or you go Brian Thomas Jr. I was doing some research and they have Christian Kirk. In his six years in the NFL, he's averaging about 10 starts a season. So he's barely playing a full season since he's came into the NFL. Then you have Zay Jones. I don't even think he's played a full season, like starting in the NFL. Then you have Gabe Davis, who played his first full season this prior season. But before that, he didn't play a full season or start a full season. So... God forbid any of them get injured. 
there is quite a lack of receiving options for Trevor Lawrence. So with this pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars, I'm going Brian Thomas Jr. to add some receiving options, add some explosiveness to that offense. And I believe that will help open up the passing game for not only for Trevor Lawrence, but allow Kirk to get open, Gabe Davis to get open, Evan Ingram to get open. So I believe this will be a great pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brian Thomas Jr. Pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals. Here, um, they can go with J.C. Latham. They can go receiver at an A. Mitchell, but I think it's a bit too high for Mitchell. Had Brock Bowers fell, I would have chose Brock Bowers. But I think that the Bengals should probably go with Byron Murphy, they're in the AFC North. The Ravens have Derrick Henry. Then you have the Steelers with Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, ground and pound game. Then you have the Cleveland Browns. Nick Chubb is probably coming back from his injury. The AFC North is a very gritty division where they're going to want to manage the game by just running the ball. And for the Bengals to have success in that division, as well as not getting shred in the run game, if they were to make the playoffs, I think it's important for them to get a serviceable defensive tackle. Right here, I got the Bengals going Byron Murphy. Pick 19, Los Angeles Rams. They can go edge, get chop, D-line, get Newton, corner, Terrian Arnold. Or go tackle. But I see a trade here. And the trade that I think that can happen at pick 19, especially, you know, with the Steelers, that Steelers might need some corner help. The Eagles are going to need some cornerback help. The Chargers are probably going to need some cornerback help. I see the Green Bay Packers trading up to pick 19 to get the cornerback that they want. So we're going to go with the Rams and the Green Bay Packers trading. Go pick 19, 25. We'll, they'll give them their 91st. Add in a late rounder fifth. So the Rams will give the Green Bay their 19th and their fifth round. And the Packers will give the Rams pick 25 and their second, third round pick 91. Trade goes through. Pick 19. If the Green Bay Packers are going to trade up in their draft, it is most likely a defensive pick. Ever since Dom Capers, they're their former defensive coordinator, ever since they've hired a new defensive coordinator, their first round pick has been a defensive pick. They hired, they hired Jeff Halfley, no different. They go defense, they trade up, they get Terry and Arnold. The Packers know that Jair Alexander has not been healthy in two out of the past three seasons. Eric Stokes, Eric Stokes has not been healthy. They don't know if Carrington Valentine is the answer at cornerback. So when you're in a division with the Vikings, with um, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, then you have Jared Goff with Amin Ross St. Brown, Jamison Willison, Williams, and then you have the Chicago Bears with DJ Moore, uh, Keenan Allen. You can never have enough corners in that division trying to stop the passing game. And I think it would be smart for the Packers to trade up and get one of the top corners in the draft just to add more help in the secondary. Um, I believe Terran Arnold has inside-out versatility, and he got recruited by Alabama as a safety. So there is some safety experience, not a lot at the college level, but I believe this will be a great pick for the Green Bay Packers to trade up and get one of the top corners in the draft to help out that defense. Pick 20. The Pittsburgh Steelers. I think right here, they go J.C. Latham. He could play right guard, right tackle. I know before I've gone with J.P.J., but J.P.J. has been losing his buzz a bit, and I believe he's falling down the boards. I don't think the Steelers should overdraft a center at 20. I mean, they can, but I think they should go with J.C. Latham right here. Pick 20, J.C. Latham. Pick 21, the Miami Dolphins. I can see a trade here with the Miami Dolphins 
and the Buffalo Bills. I can see the Buffalo Bills kind of just jumping ahead with the Dolphins. But in my honest opinion, I don't think the Bills are done in the offseason. Yes, they traded. They gave away Gabe Davis. They gave away Stephon Diggs. There's some help that is needed in the wide receiver room. Is drafting a rookie receiver going to help that offense and elevate Josh Allen's potential? Maybe, but I can definitely see the Buffalo Bills trading some future capital to a veteran to kind of come in and help out that receiving core. So I'm not going to trade up for a receiver. I'm going to let the Bills just stay where they're at and see who falls to their lap and save that capital. So the Miami Dolphins are going to stay. They can go Jazal Newton, but I think they go interior line and they go with Graham Barton. He can play center and both guard positions, and he can also play tackle in a pinch. Barton to the Miami Dolphins, pick 21. Pick 22, the Philadelphia Eagles. I always go corner with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now it comes down to Nate Wiggins and Cooper DeGene. I think Cooper DeGene will be a great fit for this Eagles defense as opposed to Nate Wiggins. Cooper DeGene can play safety, nickel, outside, punt returner, adds a lot of versatility. So that Eagles defense needs help in the pass defense. So we're going to go with Cooper DeGene. Pick 23, the Los Angeles Chargers. They're back on the board. I think the smart option for the Chargers at this spot they need receiver help. Mitchell's here. They pick Mitchell. So with their first two first round picks, they get Fuwaga and Mitchell. I think that's a solid first round for the Chargers. I think it was a great move for Jim Harbaugh to kind of get those two first round picks. I think those are solid options to get. Pick 24, the Dallas Cowboys. Definitely need some help on the line. They can go Amarius Mims, Jackson Powers Johnson. Between the two, I think the Cowboys need more help on the interior side of things, center, guard. I think right here they go Jackson Powers Johnson. The fall stops a bit for JPJ, but I, th- I can see the Cowboys picking him up in the first round. Pick 25, the Los Angeles Rams are back on the board at pick 25 after giving up their pick 19 to the Green Bay Packers. They can go edge with chop or they can go just on new in. I think between the two, I say the Rams get Newton. Aaron Donald retired. There's a gap that needs to be filled on the D-line. Jazan Newton is one of the top D-tackles in the draft, and I can see Newton just coming in and stepping right up. And I think that's a great pick for the Rams after going up a few spots from trading. Pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There is help on at the center position, but JPJ, Barton have got picked. I don't think three centers or three interior prospects get drafted in the first round, so we're going to go elsewhere. They can go chop. They can go cornerback. I say the Buccaneers go corner. They go with Nate Wiggins. Pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals, they got Malik Neighbors at pick four. It comes down to they need edge help, D-line, or corner. I say the Cardinals go with a corner. They get Kool-Aid. Pick 28, the Buffalo Bills, like I said, they stay where they are. I'm sure they're probably going to use some of that draft capital to trade for a receiver. I don't think drafting a receiver is an answer to – um fulfill Josh Allen's potential and, you know, add, add, and I don't think, you know, drafting a wide receiver is going to help out that receiving core. So we're going to see what is out here. They're suggesting receivers, Xavier Worthy. They can go safety corner. No, D line. No. I say we go trade here. I don't think the Bills like what they see at this spot. Yeah, 
I don't think the Bills like who they see at this spot. So we're going to go trade here. Um, Who can I see them trading with? This is interesting. I see the Buffalo Bills trading out of the first round, going to the second round. So Buffalo Bills, especially with some lack of capital here, I'm sure they could kind of get some capital. We'll go with the Washington Commanders, 28-36. Let's give them a third. No, it's too much. All right. So we'll go. So the Commanders are going to jump up eight spots. Buffalo Bills trade out of the first round, get some additional draft capital. The Commanders gave up a lot of sacks this past season, and I think it is important for them to invest on the offensive line. Amarius Mims is here. They go Amarius Mims. Pick 29, the Detroit Lions. They need a corner badly, um, but I think at this spot, Chop is here. I can see them getting Chop to be opposite of Aiden Hutchinson. Chop Robinson, pick 29. Pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens. They, there is some tackle help, but by them drafting Zay Flowers last year, I can see them going receiver and getting younger. Odell Beckham is not there, so... I believe the best pick for the Ravens right here is Keon Coleman. He's six foot five, jump ball specialist, red zone specialist, big slot boundary. I believe he adds some versatility to that offense, and I believe having Keon Coleman and Zay Flowers would be a great one-two punch for Lamar Jackson, especially due to Coleman's height. Coleman sneaks into the first round. The Ravens draft Coleman. Pick thirty-one, the San Francisco 49ers. I see them getting Tyler Guyton. Is Tyler Guyton a day one starter? Probably not, but Trent Williams probably has a year or two left, and I believe Trent Williams will be a great mentor for Tyler Guyton before Guyton could be a everyday starter. 49ers believe in his potential and upside. They go Guyton. Pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs. I do believe they go receiver here or do they go tackle no they go receiver here rashi rice hollywood brown i think they should add a speedy receiver xavier worthy pick 33 the carolina panthers i think they need help at the center position or guard position but i think it'll be very smart to get someone like zach frazier at pick 33 Panthers, Zach Frazier. The New England Patriots, they are building their infrastructure. They got a day one impact starter, Marvin Harrison Jr. His ceiling is 1,000 receiving yards and probably 10 touchdowns. That's his floor. His ceiling is having an all-pro kind of career. Patriots need playmakers. They get Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick three. Now at pick 34. Jacoby Brissett has a playmaker in Marvin Harrison Jr. It is important that his blind side is there and to protect them. I think right here they go with Jordan Morgan and continue to invest in other positions and fill the holes on the Patriots team before they can invest in that quarterback. Is there a franchise quarterback in this draft? I don't know. This is a two-round mock draft, so I'm going to go with who I believe will be the best two picks here. So I believe that the best route for the Patriots in this mock draft is getting a playmaker, Marvin Harrison Jr., and then getting a left tackle on a fringe first-rounder, Jordan Morgan. Pick 35, the Arizona Cardinals. This right here, they go edge, Darius Robinson. And let me just talk about the Patriots. I'm sure Penix was there, Bo Nix was there. The reason why I did not pick them at pick 34, they're both 24 years old. Michael Penix has a long injury history. I'm sure he'll be a great fit just looking at the ball with Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think it would be a smart decision for the Patriots to draft someone with such an extensive injury history. And with Bo Nix, like I said, 24 years old, and I feel like he thrived in an 
Oregon scheme. Screens, a lot of short passes. I think he was more of a system fit, and I just don't think that the Patriots would want to get one or the other at the age of 24. So that's why I went left tackle with the Patriots. Pick 36, the Buffalo Bills. They can go receiver. Like I said, I'm sure they'll probably use some capital to probably trade for one. They can go the line, corner, safety. Now that they traded back and got some additional capital, let's let's add a receiver here. I don't think a receiver was smart in the first round, but now that they gained some capital, I think they should start to... Um, yeah, I think it would be smart to at least throw in a cheap route wide receiver in there. So we'll just go Troy Franklin. Pick 37, the Los Angeles Chargers. They got Tulise Fawaga. They got NNA Mitchell. Now it's either tight end or cornerback. I think right here they go with Ennis Rakeshaw Jr. I think he's probably one of the best uh, press man corners in the draft. He's very good at jamming receivers at the line of scrimmage, knocking them off their routes. So they go with one of the top press man corners, Ennis Rakeshaw Jr. and the opposite of Asante Samuel. Pick 38, the Tennessee Titans. They can go corner. They got Sneed. They can go edge. They can go receiver here. We will go... We'll go receiver here. Now, do we go receiver here? What do you guys think? No, we'll go trade. I think the Raiders have had enough not getting Michael Penix. So I think right here is where the Raiders will draft up, will trade up six spots with the Titans. I think the Raiders kind of had enough. I think they know who their guy is, and I think you just go and get him. Uh, perfect trade. Michael Penix Jr. to the Las Vegas Raiders. Pick 39, the Carolina Panthers. They got Zach Frazier. I think they should invest in their wide receiver core. Yes, they got Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen. Mingo is there, but let's continue to add more pass catchers for Bryce Young. I know McConkie's there, Wilson's there, but let's go, let's go with Leggett. We'll go with Leggett for the Panthers. Pick 40, the Washington Commanders are back on. They got Drake May. They trade into their first round again, Marius Mims, which I believe was a great move to invest in the trenches. Now let's go on the defensive side. Of, and I think right here they go with Kamari Lasseter. Dan Quinn is a defensive coordinator. He's not the head coach. I'm sure he's going to want to build his defense similar to how he built it on the Cowboys. So they'll add a corner, Kamari Lasseter. The Green Bay Packers pick 41. Now, they got their corner, Terrian Arnold. Now, I believe at pick 41, I think they should invest in the offensive line. I know Peyton Wilson's here, Edron Cooper's here, but if you look at the Green Bay Packers depth chart, it is lacking in depth. I believe that Rasheed Walker needs some competition Elton Jenkins has the left guard spot taken right there. Josh Myers is on the last year of the rookie deal. He's probably not there next year. Then you have Sean Ryan on the right guard. We don't know if he's a long-term answer. And then we have Zach Tom at right tackle. who He has it locked down, but there is no backup to um, Zach Tom. The Packers are probably one of the best teams in the NFL in terms of developing offensive linemen. And I think by them getting Kingsley in the second round, he doesn't come in as a day one starter. He's someone that can compete with Rashid Walker on the left-hand side, but also be mentored by Zach Tom. I think they invest on the line to protect Jordan Love for the future, develop Kingsley until his time is ready to start. Pick 41, the Packers go Kingsley. Pick 42, the Houston Texans. They traded for Stephon Diggs. That offense is going to be incredible. I'm very excited to see how the Texans, Texans season goes. 
Um, they can go receiver. They can go D tackle, Brandon Fisk. Um, the Giants are an interesting spot to get Bo Nix. So are the Falcons. I can see the Falcons at least getting a quarterback to sit for a few years, but do the Falcons want to draft a quarterback to sit a few years and by the time it's their time to start? Bo Nix is damn near 30 years old. I don't think they go with Bo Nix. Um, who? I see the Texans overdrafting a bit and getting someone like Tavondre Sweat. Here's why. That defense got gashed against the Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs. I mean, got ran over. And having a D tackle like Devondre Sweat, he could take on the setter and the guard at the same time, plug in the gaps, stop the run. And I think having a big body D tackle on that defensive line will be a smart move. God forbid the Texans play the Ravens again in the playoffs and get ran all over. Get Sweat, plug in the gaps, stop the run. That would be smart for that defense. Overdraft a bit for Devondre Sweat. 42. Pick 43, the Atlanta Falcons. They went with Dallas Turner, the best edge in the draft. Now here's them in the second round. They can go corner, receiver, D-line. Yes, they have Rondell Moore. They have Darnell Mooney. But are they enough to make this offense explosive? That's the question. London, great. Kyle Pitts, great. Kirk will just pepper them with targets. But if London and Pitts are covered, can he trust Rondo Moore and Mooney to be good second options in the right receiver room? I don't know, but I think it's important for them to kind of build that defense now that they have a quarterback. So let's go with Brandon Fisk. Build up the defense, the the D line trench a bit. Pick forty four. The Titans are back on after trading with the Raiders. They can go corner, receiver. They can go edge. We will go edge. Chris Braswell. Pick forty five. New Orleans Saints. They got Olu in the first round. Good left tackle. It's, I think like the second best left tackle in the draft. Let's see who's remaining here. Let's go with McConkey. I think Chris Olave needs a running mate opposite of him. McConkey had himself a good senior bowl. I think Olave and McConkey, McConkey will be great receiving options for Derek Carr, especially with his blind side protecting him. Go McConkey. Pick 46. The Colts, they got Brock Bowers. I think they go cornerback here. They get TJ Tampa. Pick 47, the New York Giants. They got Roma Dunze. They can go tackle. They can go corner. I think they go with Bo Nix. Yes, he's 24 years old, but he ended the college season with the highest completion percentage. Yes, he was in the Oregon system, but I don't think the Giants leave this draft without drafting a quarterback. Daniel Jones is most likely in his last year. Locke is there for a year. Giants need a quarterback to add some depth. I think the Giants get Bo Nix. Pick 47. Pick 48, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They get Brian Tompkins Jr. I think they go corner here. Max Melton. Pick 49, the Bengals. Byron Murphy, pick 18. They can go tackle. I believe they go tight end, Jatavian Sanders. Jatavian Sanders. I'm sorry if I said that wrong, but Jatavian. I'll go Jatavian Sanders. Pick 50, the Philadelphia Eagles. They got Cooper DeJean. Great pick for that defense. I believe they go receiver here. Roman Wilson. I think with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, 
I think Roman Wilson will be a great slot option for that offense. And I believe um, pick 50 will be a great slot for uh, Roman Wilson. Pick 51, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they got J.C. Latham. I don't think they go in the trenches again. So I think it's between wide receiver or cornerback. Let's go wide receiver. They get Corley, opposite of George Pickens. Pick 52, Los Angeles Raiders. They got Drazon Newton. I think they go either edge or corner. I think they go corner. Mike Samuel still. He is a ball hawk. I'm sure he's like pure, like a pure nickel corner, but I don't think Mike leaves the second round with like I don't think he falls out of the second round. I think the second round where is where Mike gets drafted. The Rams need some cornerback help. Samuel still to the Rams. Pick 53. The Philadelphia Eagles with their second. Second round pick, they can invest in the trenches, O-line, they can go edge, they can go linebacker. I say the Philadelphia Eagles, interesting, either edge, they got Bryce Huff, and they have Nolan Smith. Uh, uh, uh. They go Peyton Wilson. This guy plays with his head on fire. He's everywhere. Wherever the ball is, he's there. He's good in coverage. Come crashing down. Yes, he has an injury history, but he exploded at the combine. I think he gets drafted somewhere in the second round. I think the Eagles get Peyton Wilson. Pick 54, the Cleveland Browns, they can go linebacker, but I think they go D-tackle here with Chris Jenkins. I believe this will allow Miles Garrett to get off the edges and attack the quarterback. Chris Jenkins will be a great pick on the D-line for the Browns. Chris Jenkins to the Browns. Pick 55, the Miami Dolphins. They got Graham Barton at pick 21. They could either go tackle, but with Christian Wilkins, Signing a contract with the Las Vegas Raiders. There is a much, much, much needed help on the D-line. They go with Smith. Pick 56, the Dallas Cowboys. They went with JPJ. I think here they go Edron Cooper. Take care of the linebacker position. Pick 57, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got Nate Wiggins. I think this is where they go edge. Marshawn Nealon. Pick 58, the Green Bay Packers. They went Terry and Arnold. They got Kinsley. I think they go defense again. Um, at They go defense at pick 58. Junior Colson. Or they go D-line. I think they go Junior Colson. Um, with Jeff Halfley as a defensive coordinator. They have Quay Walker, Isaiah McDuffie, but I don't think McDuffie is a starter. I think he is a great backup, and in the NFL, it is a passing league. Most defenses play out of nickel. I don't think Isaiah McDuffie is capable of being an everyday down nickel back linebacker. Junior Colson is. He is a three-down linebacker. He barely misses tackles, and he's someone that can cover a lot of ground a lot quicker than McDuffie, and I believe Colson and Quay will be a great linebacker duo. Pick 58, Junior Colson, and the Green Bay Packers love um, players that come from championship caliber teams. So pick 58, Junior Colson. Pick 59, the Houston Texans. They got sweat. They can go corner, but I think this is a bit too high for Kyrie Jackson. They can go linebacker. No. Do they need a receiver? Do they get a safety? Edge. We're going to go receiver here. Do they need it? I don't think so, but you can never have enough receiving options for CJ Shroud. So we'll go receiver here. We'll go... Ricky. Pick 60, 
the Buffalo Bills. They got Troy Frank Troy Franklin at pick 60 at 36. I think this is where they go defense. It's either between Tyler Newbin or the D line. Um, I don't even think they signed, re-signed Micah Hyde. So with Jordan Poyer going to the Dolphins, and I don't even think Micah Hyde is back. I think they go safety here. Tyler Newbin. The Detroit Lions, they got chop at pick 29. They can either go corner. There is corner help that is needed on this team. D-line, receiver. I think the Lions can use themselves an extra receiver. Amin Ross St. Browns, Jamison will add Polk to that receiving core. Pick 62, the Baltimore Ravens. They got Keon Coleman, receiver. They can go tackle, cornerback, interior. Let's see who's out here. We will invest in the trenches. Let me go BB for the Ravens. Pick 63, the San Francisco 49ers. They got themselves a developmental project. And Tyler Guyton, he will be a day one starter once Trent Williams' time is done. So they went tackle in the first round. Go corner, interior. I think they go D-line. Apply some pressure to the front four. Rook. And pick 64, the Kansas City Chiefs. They can go tackle here. D-line. But with Sneed going to the tight ends, I can see the Chiefs going corner here. I understand that Jackson is ranked 83 and the Chiefs are at 64, but Jackson is one of the purest press man corners in the draft. Um, I think they overdraft a bit and get a corner to fill in that spot. So that is it for my two round mock draft. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more weekly content. Thank you so much and see you next week.